subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, Neds. Welcome to Junior High School Hour on Joy Learning Channel. My name is Isaac Ohiria Mankwa, your facilitator for ICT. Well, today we are going to talk about something very interesting, though a bit technical, but very interesting. And I know at the end of this lesson, you will find it very helping for this topic. We are going to talk about copyright. And for this for the purpose of our lesson, we are going to talk about copyright ethics. Yeah, someone will say, why copyright? Yeah, copyright ethics because since we are nerds, we are people who love ICT, definitely we will have to know our rights and, our, and what to do and what not to do when we are on the internet. So, at the end of this lesson, what are we expected? Very interesting, as I said, we are expected that we should understand the concept of copyright and copyright infringement. Also, we are going to talk about the, st um, the reasons why we have our copyrights or the copyright protection. Why do we have them? We are also going to talk about how to um, the Guardian copyright system, how it is written, and what is in for what is in there for us. Also, we are going to talk about breaking the law when it comes to copyright. Now, let's join the train and see what happens. Now, on our screens, I have a simple scenario of a friend called Mr. Yaomedu. He designed a very sophisticated software of which was valued at a total cost of $50 million. A friend of his had access to his laptop and decided to copy this software. Now, this friend saved it on, installed it, sorry, installed it on his laptop, and it was rather unfortunate, Mr. Yao also realized that this, his software is now on the market for sale and also being used by others. What do you think was wrong, or what do you think Mr. Yao was supposed to do. Now, this topic is going to look at some of these issues. And at the end of our lesson, I will ask you what we were supposed to do, or what Mr. Yao was supposed to do. And if you are in Mr. Yao's shoe, how do you think you feel when this thing happens to you? A little history about copyright. Now, copyright in the, um, the 17th century, the British decided to sit down and give rights to some published books and publishers. So, in doing so, they came up with what we call the Statutes of Anne. Someone will ask, what is our Statutes? They are simply laws which are being passed by the government. Now, this copyright or the statute of art was just for book publishers. And with the advent of technology and other things, it evolved into other areas or other sectors like music, like softwares, like derivative works and all other areas. Now, since we know the history, a brief history about it, what then is copyright? Now, first and foremost, you should know that copyright, the slide that came before said that what the first ever copyright was a legal document. So we can say that copyright is a legal document. So, copyright in itself is a concept or a legal concept. Now, it pertains to the original work of an individual. That means, let's say you have created something, you have written a book, it belongs to you. Immediately, you put it out there. There are those who might find your work interesting and also decide to make copies of it and put it out there. 
Now, someone will say, copyright. Make copies. Yes, it's very simple. Copyright simply means the right to copy. Okay, as we said, the concept of copyright. We said from our previous slide that copyright is what, first and foremost, the first um, is about legal documents. So it says the first ever copyright law was adopted in what, the, 19, the 1710. That means it's what, legal. It's talking about the law. So if the concept of copyright is legal, then what is it protecting? Now, it pertains to the original work of an individual. That means if you create any artwork, any music, any book, any software, there must be a protection or else someone else will take your work and also benefit from it. Okay. In, and it generally means to copy or the right to copy an artifact or a work. Now, this is the definition. Copyright is a legal right assigned or given to the originator of a work for a number of years to print, publish, perform, film, or record literary, artistic, or musical material. As the definition said, I'm taking it once again, it says copyright is a legal right given or assigned to the originator of a work for a number of years to print, publish, perform, film, or record literary, li sorry, record literary, artistic, or musical material. That means the copyright in itself is there to protect the works that we have done. Be it a print that is in the form of a book, it can be fictional or non-fictional. Be it a film, a software, a music, or anything that you think is from your own invention. Okay, it can also be described as a collection of rights that automatically give someone who creates an original work of authorship like literal work as we've mentioned already a song a movie or a software so when you create that program when you create that software that great idea that you have when you are able to put it together make sure you seek the help of someone who can help you copyright your work what can be copyrighted? Now, we've mentioned a whole lot. We've mentioned the web films, the print. But in Ghana, our, our, the 2005 Copyright Act listed a number of items that can be copyrighted. And they are, the first one is literary work. And, and the literary work, as I said, it could be the print form. It could be a fictional or non-fictional. It could also, we also have the artistic work, we also have the music work, we also have the sound recordings, audio visual works like TV programs or like this very show. Now, we also have derivative works, computer software or programs. Now, someone might ask, what is a der derivative work? I want you to try and think around it. You are correct. Derivative work or derivative can also be derived. It's a word which has its root from derive, to get out of. So derivative works are talking about works that are derived from other works or works that are derived from other already copyrighted works. We also have industrial designs. Hey, the fabric that you are wearing, the shirt that you are wearing belongs to someone and no one other than that person can have right to that work. What then cannot be copyrighted? Now, 
some years back, I had an idea to put something together. But rather unfortunately, I was not able to put it together because of some issues. Three months down the line, I realized that someone also had done a similar thing. I want to ask the question, did it belong to me? No, I just had an idea. And someone also had that same idea. So, therefore, an idea cannot be copyrighted. Whatever is in your head can also be in another person's head. Maybe you are thinking of creating this software or this program. Someone also might be thinking of the same thing. So, the best way to secure your idea is to put it down, bring it into fusion, then you copyright it. Also, Another thing that cannot be copyrighted is concept. Concepts, they can never be copyrighted. Because the concept of doing something in group A can also be done or replicated in group B. Which is, they are just all ideas. And they can never be copyrighted. Works which are not original in character. That means something you did not create on your own. It can never be copyrighted. It has been fixed in any definite medium. Anything that has been fixed in any definite medium of expression now known or later to be developed with a result that the work can directly or with the aid of any device be perceived, reproduced or otherwise communicated. These are all examples of works that can never ever be copyrighted why then do we copyright our products or why then or why are we supposed to copyright your guess is right as mine it is very important to copyright because it primary, the primary design to protect the works of people if you have your work which costs you a lot of money and I should pick that same work and do it at a cheaper price and sell it for a cheaper price what do you think will happen? definitely you will lose money I will gain because I didn't suffer for that it is made to ensure no one copies the work of another another person to make profits or gains it is created to make sure people are properly rewarded for their hard work in creating new products it is also to ensure healthy competition since people are forced to create new products without having to copy already existed ones do you agree with that I solely agree with that because imagine if I have created phone A with specific features and you want to create something better than mine don't you think it brings competition and thereby you have your own product I have my product and hey we are going forward we are moving through development and as we compete we bring new innovations okay now, we have mentioned that the copyright in Ghana protects certain things and also do not protect others. But let's look at the copyright in Ghana itself to see what it entails. Now, in Ghana, the copyright law, that was, P that is, that, that was the PNDC law 110, was enacted in March 21, that's in 1985, and it provides protection to artists for the list of products under a particular section, which is the section 2 of the law, for a period of the life of the author and 50 years after his death. So let's say you have created this program. In the period that you are alive, you are protected by the law. And 50 years after your death, any benefits that come from this copyright belongs to you. 
Now, we thought it wise and looked through because there are other countries around us and we are not the only countries that have our copyrights. So internationally, they came together for what we call the Bern Convention. And other convention, the European Convention is also there. And they came together and designed a standardized copyright for the world. Now, this is what we did. We also looked through it and also developed our own new copyright, which, brought, which gave birth to the 2005 Act. That's the Act 690. The law provides protection for sound, sound recording, folklore, and the establishment of system of collective administration of other rights. That means they create offices that overlook these issues. The law establishes a copyright office and provides criminal sanctions for the infringement of copyright. However, Technology changes, new international obligations, and the need for to enhance these laws led to the drafting of the copyright I mentioned before, the 2005 copyright. That's the Act 690. Now, let's look at what is in the Act 690 or what the difference or the difference between the Act 690 and the 1985 Act. Now, this is the difference. In the PNDC Law 110, we realized that the product was for the lifetime of the person or the originator and 50 years after. But everything changed. The, with the Act 690, they decided that the law can protect the author of the work for the period he lives and 70 years after his death that means there's an addition of 20 years yes isn't that no good definitely if you create something good and you are no more those behind you or your beneficiaries will still have to benefit from those products in the case of sound recording it only give protection for 70 years from the year of publication so let's say you have created your music. The day you publish your music and you go and register it with a copyright protection agency, what happens is that your song will be protected for the span of 70 years. And after 70 years, anyone or anybody can pick your work and use it for whatever they like. So these are the two major differences. There are other differences that are in there, but for the purpose of our lesson, we are not going in there. We just want to leave the others for the lawyers to do that. Now, notice this. The ATA has the exclusive economic right in respect to the work to do or authorize the doing of any of the following. So that means after you have designed your work, invented, you have the right to give to anyone to do any other thing. And these are the things that you can give right to. The production of the work in any manner or form. So if I have created a software and I give it to you that now you can use it for anything you want. That means you are not backed by um, the law will not you don't infringe the law when you take my work for anything that I have asked you to use it for. Now, the translation, adaptation, agreements, or any other transformation of the work can also be done by you if I give you the right to use my work. Not when you have bought my work, but when I give you the right to use my work for anything. You can also use it for public performances, broadcasting, and communication of the work in public. You realize that everywhere we go, the music that our musicians do uh, can be found at the parties, 
why it is food arouse. Why is it so? It's their intellectual property. Why are they being used outside? Because they have given the right. And with this right, remember, they have economic, exclusive economic right to that. So, for what I know, Musica, for us, which is the group that protects the copyright of musicians, they have decided to charge the DJs the radio stations, the television stations, and any other person who use their work. And this money is collected and then shared to the musicians or given to them. You can also, the distribution to the public of original copies or copies of the work by way of first sales or other first transfer of ownership. So let me say, I have created my work, I've given it to you, or my first sale, I can ask you to do the first sale for me, of which you will gain. Probably, at the end, I will also gain. The commercial rental to the public of original or copies of the work, I can give you the right to also rent my work out, or even give it out for free. Now, let's look at something. Something happened some time ago, back in 2012. Since we are in the technological world, I'm going to focus on two companies. That's Apple and Samsung. I know most of you might have heard what happened. Now, in 2012, a legal battle began. And what was this legal battle? Apple accused Samsung that they have taken a part of their product and created their phones. And Samsung also denied it. Do you know what happened? In court, the court ruled that indeed what Samsung did was wrong. That they were, they were supposed to pay a little over $1 billion to Apple. Now, Samsung didn't agree and went to court. Now, later, after their legal battles, what happened was that Samsung ended up paying 539 million US dollars. That's a huge amount of money because they didn't ask permission before taking someone else's work. So, if you should take anyone's work, you should know trouble is coming your way. Always make sure you ask permission, else the copyright we definitely get to you. Now, for all this copyright talk, there are certain conditions an artwork or a work or an originator's work must meet before they are copyrighted. Now, it must be original in character. You cannot pick someone else's work and say it is yours. It must be original. It must be the first of its kind. Or it must be produced in such a way that no one will be able to pinpoint anything that belongs to him or her. In the case of Samsung and Apple, Samsung might have copied something from Apple. Apple decided that no, I will not allow it because it is what makes my phone an Apple phone. So then I'll take you to court. So in the first and foremost, it must be what? Original. It must come from an original idea. It, it has, it must also be what? Fixed in a definition medium or a, def, a definite medium. That means, let's say, if you're talking about a software, a printware, you must show where they are located. If I have a software or a CD-ROM, definitely, no one else can copy it because it's not my CD ROM. That is where it can be what found. It's fixed. Now, you say it can also it should or where it can be later developed with the result of the work. Where it can also be reproduced later to be developed with the result that the work can either directly or with the aid of any machine or device be perceived 
So if I have my work on the CD-ROM, what shows my work is on that CD-ROM? There might be nothing there. So there should be a medium or a device that can what? Bring out my work. So the last one, it is, it's, it is created by a citizen or a person who is ordinarily a resident in the Republic. So if you go outside Ghana and you create anything, and try to register it in our copyright, it will be very difficult for you to do that. You must be a resident or a citizen of Ghana to be able to use the Ghana copyright law. Now, in the case of Apple and Samsung, I mentioned something that happened that they were taken to court. Why do you think we were taken to court? Because they broke the law. In copyright, when someone breaks the law, it is called an infringement. So let's talk about copyright infringement. Now, in copyright infringement, we are talking about the breaking of copyright rules and regulations. As we know, every institution has its own rules and regulations. And copyright also has its own rules and regulations. So when you break the copyright rules and regulations, like in the case of Apple and Samsung, definitely someone will take you to court. Now, let's analyze what happened in Samsung and Apple's case. They were taken to court and they were asked to pay an amount of money. Now, when you pay such money, it is called a fine. This is one of the remedies to copyrighted or illegal copying of an art work. When you take someone's work and you reproduce it to sell or not to sell, it is called piracy. So we say piracy, other piracy is when you do not seek permission from the originator of a work and you reproduce it to sell, that's to make gains or not. It is still piracy. Now, let's talk about the effects of copyright infringement. What do you think will happen when you copyright someone's work? The copyright of Ghana has very strict penalties. Yes, I mean very strict penalties. Someone will say, when the law has not grabbed you, you have no idea there's a law. It has strict penalties for those who break the law. There are basically two forms of penal uh, penalties or sanctions that can be what preferred onto someone or be applied. These are imprisonment and fines. Now, there are certain cases where both sanctions can be applied. You can be imprisoned and also be asked to pay a fine. But hey, do you know, the fine you'll be asked to pay will be a very huge sum of money. So don't even try copywriting someone's product. Or don't even try copying someone's or selling someone's product without his or her permission. Now, one other thing. We are talking about what will happen to the one who has copyrighted. But what about the originator? What happens to him? What do you think will happen to him? Well, your guess is as good as mine. One, the person will lose money. He will lose huge sums of money. Knowing very well that the product was created with expensive raw material. The person will lose huge sums of money. Now, it's also retard progress. Imagine I have this light pen and someone decides to create or recreate this same light pen without manufacturing a different one which might be far better than mine. You will all be using the same light pen without progress. If you had sat down and tried your best, you realize that you can create something which is more slicker let me put it that way, which is more slimmer 
than what has been created. So let's not try copying other people's product. Why don't we sit down, brainstorm, and come up with ways that we can create a more robust product instead of taking someone's work? We can also talk about it discourage people creating and inventing new things. In the case of Mr. Yaobedu, the scenario I gave before, he created something sophisticated and someone else took it, shared it online and even sold it. Now, if he would like to create something, what do you think will happen? He either be more careful or he will lose interest in even creating anything because he has lost a lot of money. Yes, I'll tell you, a lot of money and a lot of time. Because creating an original work demands money and time. It causes the price of products to also rise. Yes, because if I should create this pen and sell it for a hundred Ghana cities, and someone should also manufacture an inferior one and price it for 20 Ghana city. What do you think, or how much do you think I will price mine the next time? It will definitely go high because I did not make any profit from my first sale, which cost a lot of money. So to put in more money, definitely to make my profit, I have to increase my price. So we can say that copyright or infringing of copyright is one of the reasons for certain products being very costly. Now, it denies individuals and organization funds they need to create new and better products. So, as I was saying, I have created this, sold it for 100 cities. Someone sells the same or an inferior product for 20 Ghana cities. What happens to me? I don't have enough money. I can't create a new product. Then that means the price will still go high. If I had made profit, increased my production, definitely I will get enough money to produce new, uh, new inventions. So, the next time you pick a software, ask yourself, have I followed the copyright rules? Is this software copyrighted? Now, before I go on, remember, I mentioned software, copy of softwares. There are certain softwares which are co which we call them, um, how do we call it? which are free for us to copy. They are not necessarily copyrighted. These softwares are created by people all around. They sit down, when I create one, I give it out. Then someone also adds something to it. And when this is done, these softwares are not sold. They are called open source software. Open source. They are not for sale. They are for everyone to use. Just the only thing is that they try to improve on it. So if you have any suggestion where you are using an open source software, you give it to them and they improve on it. Next time you go online to download that game, to download that movie, ask yourself, are you doing the right thing? Well, I'll leave the judgment to you. So, before we go on, I want to ask one last question. Before we started, I gave a scenario of Mr. Medu, Yao Medu, who created a software. I would like you to write something down or what you think he should have done, what he can do from now, and in creating new software, what he should do. So write something down. I'll give you just a minute.
Okay. I think by now you are done with writing. Now, I know you wrote that Mr. Main should have copyrighted his product. Yes, he should have sent it to the Copyright Protection Agency to copyright his product. But it's rather unfortunate he cannot do anything about it now. He cannot claim back his product. For now, his friend who sold it and even shared it can say that it was Mr. Menu's idea. And ideas, remember, are not copyrighted. Let's go back to eligibility or the conditions for eligibility for copywriting. Or what are the conditions that can help you copyright product? And we'll see something. He says it, it should be what an original. Or it should be original in character. Yes, it was original in character. It is created by a citizen of Ghana or a citizen or a person who resides in the country or in, or in the Republic who has created this product. Yes, he was in the country, but he didn't take action. He, set, he has satisfied most of the conditions, but he didn't take action. And so therefore, when we look at conditions that are not eligible for copywriting, we realize that Mr. Menu made a mistake. He made a mistake by not copywriting. Next time, when you have that brilliant idea, as I said before, put it down on paper. Put it to work. And when you are done, ask daddy, ask mommy, or anyone you trust, I repeat, ask daddy, ask mommy, or anyone you trust to help you copyright your product. And remember, don't take anyone's product as your own. Now, I want to talk a little about the derivative works. Now, these derivative works can be seen all around. They can be seen all around. Yes. Have you heard of music where you realize that other people's music can be located in another person's music arrangement? Yes. That's an example of a derivative work. Now, when you take someone's work and you decide to translate it into a different language, it is also a derivative work because it was derived from an original. When you take someone's music and decide to rearrange the sound to form your own, it is a derivative work. But hey, don't ever do this without the permission of the originator. It is the originator's sole right to do a derivative. An old absolute or total right for that work so if you want to take anybody's work ask permission when the person gives you the go ahead you can do whatever you discussed with the person and remember don't go beyond what you discussed with the person if you go beyond it you have breached or you have infringed on copyright and the person can still take you on now with all said and done, I want us to look at these questions and try them for it. So get your pens, your papers, and let's write these questions down. Question one What was the first real copyright act known as? I know it's very simple. I know you can write it. What did the first copyright protect when it was passed? So what was the protection for? The first copyright, what was it protecting? Now, after that, why don't you try your hands on defining copyright infringement? Then, what is piracy? What is piracy? Identify three benefits of copyright protection. 
identify three benefits of copyright protection. And number six, identify two major effects of breaking copyright laws. I'll give you 10 minutes, and when you are done, we will come back with the answer. Well, I know by now you are done. Now, I'm going over the question one more time before we go and look at the solutions. Now, the first question says, what, are the f what was the first real copyright act known as? The question two says, what did the first copyright protect when it was passed? Question three says, define copyright infringement. Question four, what is piracy? Question five, identify three benefits of copyright protection. Question six, identify two major effects of breaking copyright laws. Now, our solutions. The first one, the answer to the question one is the first real copyright act was called Statute of Anne, and I know you know the country of origin. It is in what Britain, or it was in Britain in the year 1710. The second question, which says, What did the first copyright protect when it was passed? The answer is what book publishers, book publishers. So it was there to protect book publishers and the copy of books. By the way, did you know that the protection of book publishers was also to encourage people to write more books? Yes, it is a positive, a positive sign for us. The third question, which says define copyright infringement. And I know most of you had it easy because copyright infringement, as we have said, is breaking the copyright rules. So the definition goes this way. It is a term used to describe the acts of breaking copyright rules and regulations. The term used to describe the act of breaking copyright rules and regulations. Question four, what is piracy? Piracy is reproducing and selling of someone else's work without the permission of the owner so as i said you went online downloaded the software yeah you spent a lot of data downloading it and you sold it to another person do you know you have infringed on someone's copyright i can say 
you have stolen someone's work and you are gaining from it which is wrong so next time when you go online don't take any other person's work and resell it and remember before you can resell you have to what? ask permission question five which says the benefits of copyright protection three benefits of copyright protection one from my side this is what i can give you i know there are a lot of benefits that you have written down i know you didn't write three for me you wrote more than three but three that i'm going to give you we have one legal evidence yes if you said i've stolen your work and i've sold it or i have infringed on your copyright where is your evidence that is why in the evidence the copyright law it said that you should what have it fixed on a medium it can be what reproduced or can be seen through any other device if you don't have evidence that you have copyrighted or you have protected your product definitely i will sell it for free and i'll get money and you might not have what the money that you invested in the product okay we also have protects your creativity yes it protects your creativity in the sense that as you have copyrighted you know no one can take what belongs to you so you are more or less encouraged to create more yes you are encouraged to create more so as i'm standing here i encourage you to put that idea into practice make sure it becomes a product when it becomes a product copyright it and i'm encouraging you that this product will fetch you a lot and as it fetches you a lot you can also what create more it helps in creating new inventions well we mentioned that if my product is copyrighted and i realize that this light pen that i've created is fetching me enough why don't i create a more robust one probably one which is slimmer one which is lighter or one which let's say is invisible those of us who are you know that can say you know if you have an invisible light pen well it will help so if i have my money coming back to me then i can easily what invent new stuff okay now question c says two effects or two major effects of breaking copyright laws the first i have written here we can have high cost of product which we mentioned that if this light pen that i produced if you should create take my work recreate another one which is less cheaper and sell it i will not get my money thereby if i want to create more of my product i will have to increase the price i will have to increase the price so that i can recoup my interest and also my money now the second one is what imprisonment or fine imprisonment or fine yes you can be imprisoned you can be fined you can be asked to pay an amount of money and remember that money is huge like in the case of samsung and apple samsung was asked to pay one a little above one uh, one point one billion dollars well you know one billion dollars is a huge and lots of money well why don't you sit down be innovative think about something get someone who you can trust to guide you and invent it definitely it will fetch you something one billion is no small money so if you are able to get all these questions correct as i always say you are dead if you are able to get let's say four of them correct hey you're also in it 
because this topic in itself I told you from the beginning is a little bit technical but since we go online and we partake in other activities we should know what we are doing so that we don't break the law so today what have we learned we spoke about copyright where it began that was in Britain in the year 1710 and the name of that copyright was the Statute of Anne it seeked or it provided protection for book publications now when it came to inventions and other things well they were not pro protected so anyone can take your work and do whatever they want with it so as time went on they decided to extend copyrights and now covers music literary work be it fictional or non-fictional inventions softwares or programs we can talk about derivative works we can talk about uh, movies or films visual audio visuals these are all copyright protected now we also spoke about copyright infringement that is when you break the law or when you break the copyright law where you pick someone's product which is copyrighted then you sell you use it or you redistribute without the permission of the owner definitely you are breaking the law remember most products most softwares are for sale if you get a free one which is as, which is an open source software you are free to use and it even tells you you are free to distribute but please beware and be very very careful of the software you download if they are open source someone might hide a line of code that can be siphoning information from your computer to their computer or someone might able even implant a virus in that software so be sure and be careful of the software or the open source software that you download and let it be from a genuine source Okay, we also spoke about the Ghana copyright law, which also looked at the PNDC law 110, which seek to protect originators of work for their lifetime and also 50 years after they have departed from earth. But there was a change in 2005, which is the Act 690 which also seek to protect an originator's work for the lifespan of that person and also 70 years after that person is gone. But for music, it only protects you for 70 years after you have what? Produced your music or you have brought the music out for sale. Now remember, copyright protection it's a good thing don't take any other person's product don't take that software and resell it don't take that software and redistribute pay some cash pay some money ask daddy for it ask mommy for it help the one who also designs remember if you design it and you are losing money will you be happy no way I know you will never be happy and you will not be interested in creating any new thing. By the way, we have come to the end of the program. I'm your facilitator, Isaac Ohene Amankwa, for ICT. Till we meet again, it's bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.